Welcome back everyone for lecture nine, part two, where in this case, we're gonna be talking about different ways to estimate our vapor pressure. So in this case, we've got three different methods. We've got the Clausius clapeyron equation, Cox charts, and the Antoine equation. Now, to start, we've got that Clausius clapeyron equation. It's one way to estimate our P star vapor pressure. And this equation was derived from thermodynamics. So it's strictly a theoretical equation. So in this case, the a Clausius Clapeyron equation is written as ln P star equals B minus the latent heat of vaporization divided by the ideal gas constant and temperature. And for latent heat of vaporization, that hat indicates that it's on a per unit mass basis. And normally what would happen in this case using the Clausius Clapeyron equation is that you would linearize this equation. You plot natural log P star versus one over T. And You'd have a slope that's delta HV, the latent heat of vaporization, divided by the ideal gas law constant. So if you had some information on your system, for example, you knew what P star was at one particular temperature, you knew the latent heat of vaporization, you could then estimate, based on all that information, what the P star would be at a different temperature. Or if you had a couple of P stars and at the respective temperatures, you can estimate what the latent heat of vaporization would be. And you, so you can mix and match however you like to try and obtain some information on your system. Now with the Clausius Clapeyron equation, there's a couple of problems with it. So for example, our latent heat of vaporization is not quite constant over T. And this equation is good for only a small temperature range. And the reason this is very limiting, or the reason this is limiting, or it is limited, is because it's a theoretical equation. There's no experimental evidence, uh, experimental results to help support this equation. And because of that, this equation is not gonna be the most worthwhile to use. Now, the another option that we have are using Cox charts, where you've got, again, you've got a vapor pressure on the y-axis, you've got temperature on the x-axis, and with a Cox chart, you have a large number of compounds on the same chart. And so you can read the chart to obtain your vapor pressures. Now, the challenge with this is that this chart is very compact. And, be, and by doing that, it's a lot harder to actually obtain the correct P star value from these charts. You kind of, you have to do a lot of eyeballing to make sure you're close to whatever that vapor pressure is supposed to be at your given temperatures. And with the Cox chart, it is good. It does give you P stars over a wider range of temperatures compared to Clausius Clapeyron. You've got the plot P star, ln P star versus T. And so this would be a better idea of something to use compared to Clausius Clapeyron, but there's another method that's actually still better than the Cox chart because I'm sure you don't want to read a chart and have to squint your eyes to find these values. And so that leads us into that last option for estimating our vapor pressure, which is the Antoine equation. And so the Antoine equation has the, the form of log in the base 10 P star equals A minus B over T plus C. And usually your T is in degrees Celsius and your P star is in millimeters of mercury. And this is a great option and for class, we're going to be using this. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, so I wanted to a little elaborate a little bit more about this Antoine equation, because you have A, B, and C, and those are constants that are very dependent on the compound you're using. And so every compound has is going to have a different set of A, B, and C, and it actually depends on who's providing those constants with what units you actually should be using for T and P star. Now for the set of Antoine equation constants that I've provided, P star is gonna be in millimeters of mercury and T is, in, is going to be in degrees Celsius. But whenever you're obtaining this information from a table, you need to pay attention to make sure you have the right units for P star and T. And so one example I had was, we're gonna have uh, acetone where we'll say it's a T equals 50 degrees Celsius. And in this case, we have our A, B, and C constants and so what I can do is I can take that Antoine equation, substitute in all my known values, and then from there I can rearrange, exponentiate, and put 10 to A minus B over T plus C, 
And in that case, my P star for acetone is 614.1 millimeters of mercury. And I encourage you to double check me to make sure that you can also get that value. Now, that's our vapor pressure for acetone. We can also do this calculation for other compounds such as water. And in that case, water's got a different set of constants. Water actually has two sets of constants depending on what temperature range you're in. So always pay attention to the temperature for, for water, make sure you have the right constants. And again, we can substitute in our A, B, and C values into the Antoine equation. And in this case for water, it's gonna look like that. And from there, we can solve for our P star water. And in this case, we see it's 92.6 millimeters of mercury. Now, as, I've, as I mentioned in part one, our vapor pressure is our escape tendency. So the higher your vapor pressure is, the higher the likelihood that your compound is gonna to want to escape into the vapor phase, right? And so if we compare acetone's vapor pressure with water's vapor pressure, we see that acetone is a lot greater than water's. And that makes a lot of sense because if you spill a little bit of water on, a, on your countertop, it's gonna stay there for a while. If you spill acetone on your countertop, you might notice that acetone vaporizes very quickly, and that's because it's a, a volatile compound, and it has a high vapor pressure. And so something I just want you to remember is the more volatile the compound, the higher the P star. So hopefully you might remember with water and acetone, two things that you often see, that that's going to be the case. And so that's gonna wrap up part two, where we talked about the clausius clapeyron equation, we talked about Cox charts, and we talked about the Antoine equation. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you soon.